I know your secret. If your relationship with time had its own Facebook status, it would say it's complicated. Now, I'm not singling you out here, and I'm certainly not here to pick on you or judge you. This is just the truth for all of us. All of us are in complicated relationships with time, only made more complicated because it evolves and changes over time. Stay tuned because in this episode, we are diving into the mindset shifts you can make to create more time in your life. We're also going to uncover the limiting beliefs you have so you can change them to have less stress and get the success you truly want. Buckle up because we are going to uncover the stories that you are telling yourself. And believe me when I say these are stories you're telling yourself that are leaving you overwhelmed, rushed, busy, and feeling like you don't have enough time. I'm going to teach you and make it so that you can never use the excuse that you have no time again. And trust me, you're going to be a changed woman for it. Together, we're going to write new stories that allow you to take charge of your time, your energy, your life, your success, and most of all, your dreams. Oh, and believe me, we're going to change that relationship status that you have with time to in an open relationship. Open-minded, that is. Welcome to the Golden Girls Podcast, where we believe you can have it all. I'm your host, Lisa Michaud, and I'm spilling tangible tips, goal-getting strategies, and real-life stories to inspire you to tackle your biggest dreams. You're a woman who knows you're made for more. Get ready to leave the excuses and self-doubt behind by being vulnerable, sharing your truth, and having honest conversations so you can succeed on your terms. Together, we'll set goals you'll actually achieve by staying motivated, having fun, and building a community of women empowering women. It's time to tap into your best self, get confident, and truly have it all. Golden Girl, let's dive in. Hey there, guys. Lisa here. Thank you so much for joining for another episode of Golden Girl's podcast. In this episode, we're talking about the mindset shifts you can have to uncover and create more time and less stress in your life. Who is not interested in that? I don't know. Before we dive in, I want to do a listener shout out. And this is taken from the reviews in Apple Podcasts. So if you want to have a shout out, make sure you leave a review. Today, I want to say thank you so much to It Just Flows. Here is what she has to say. Authentic, refreshing, and wise. Lisa's energy, authenticity, and wisdom will give you a fresh perspective, grace, encouragement, and practical tools to move the needle forward on living your best life. (sighs) Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking the time to leave a review and for sharing this episode. You have no idea how much this this means to me. You know, this is all about time management. And this whole series, three-part series, by the way, the last episode, episode seven, this one, episode eight, and the next one, episode nine, all around time because I know this is something that you struggle with. And heck, it's something that I struggle with too. And I'll, I'll share lots of my stories during this episode as well. But I want to say that because I know your time, it feels like there's never enough. It means so much to me that you spend your precious time listening to this podcast, that you spend it and I know you're sharing it with your friends and your coworkers and your team members and your families and I just, it it is the best feeling ever so thank you and thank you for making the time Um, and for for those of you guys that have gone above and beyond and left a review, it seriously just, I just want to hug you from over here so thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you haven't yet left a review, please friend, take out your phone right now Make sure you hit subscribe and follow along on whatever platform you're listening on. And some serious bonus points. If you can scroll to the bottom and leave an honest written review, that would absolutely make my day. Unless it's a mean review. If you guys are something mean to say, maybe just keep that phone in your pocket right where it is. All right, let's dive in and talk about time and mindset and beliefs. I know that you believe you have no time and you may believe that you have no control over it. Now, I don't know your exact situation, so you might be over there like, well, Lisa, but you don't know my boss, or you don't know my business, or you don't know my kids, or my partner, or the family situation, and you're right, I don't. But I do know this. I do know that there is a lot missing from the conversation on time management, that it is, it's a relationship, and just like any other relationship, we bring baggage to it. And again, I'm not here to judge you on your baggage, I got mine too, believe me, but I know this, that the experts, the books, the hacks, the tactics, the strategies, that's not enough to fix a complicated relationship. When it comes to time management, it is a factor of a lot of things. And that's why this series right here, right now on Golden Girls Podcast matters and is so different. And that's why I'm so freaking excited about it, by the way. 
Time is a factor of so many things. The season of life that you're in, your goals, your capacity. And in that suitcase, that baggage that you're bringing along is your mindset, your fears, your limiting beliefs, and so much more. In this episode, we are diving into the mindset shifts you can make to create more time. We're going to uncover those limiting beliefs, like we're going to unpack that suitcase, that baggage, and then we're going to change it and intentionally put things in that allow you to have a life with less stress, more time freedom, so you have the success you want. Before I go any further, really before you go any further, make sure you listen to episode seven. In episode seven, I talk about the four big picture questions to ask yourself and answer before you try any other time management technique. Please promise me this, go back and listen to that episode because that is where we start. That is where we figure out what destination we're going to so you know what to pack in that baggage, okay? Uh, By the way, this suitcase analogy just coming to me as I'm writing, as I'm speaking this, so uh, hopefully I I can follow it through all the way through the episode. Okay, so why are hacks and strategies and tips not enough? Well, because the reality is that your success depends about 20% on strategy and 80% on mindset. So anything that teaches you just strategy, I mean, strategy is good, strategy helps, but I've said this before, mindset eats your strategy for freaking breakfast. Mindset is where we need to focus on, not the tools, not the tactics, and that's why I'm so pumped for this episode because that's what it's about. What about the things you do each and every day? Well, 45% of what you do is habit. Like literally half of what you do in a given day, a week, a month is automatic. So if you want to make a change, if you want to have time to go to the gym or to sleep more or to have a cup of tea and sit in quiet at the end of the day, we're going to have to look at your mindset and your habits. I think you'll get me when I say this. We all know that, like the strategy to get to the gym. The strategy is easy. You put your shoes on and you drive to the gym and you get out and you go. The strategy to have a cup of tea and sit on your couch is not hard. You boil the water, you put a tea bag in the cup, you, you put hot water in and you sit your butt on the couch. Like it's not hard. The strategy is not the problem. The problem is your mindset. The challenge is your mindset and your habits and that's what we have to shift. So that's what we're doing in this episode. So I'm going to share with you guys three perspective shifts to help you create more time and less stress. And then we're going to dive right into that baggage, that suitcase, and talk about your mindset and your beliefs. I'm going to give you two questions to help you uncover any limiting beliefs and understand how they might be creating negative time habits. We'll also talk about how to shift those, and I'll give you some references and some tools there too. In the next episode, episode nine, we are going to talk about strategies and tips that you can implement so you can put successful habits in place for you, your life, and your goals. So today, all about mindset, let's start with a story. Oh, so I had my kid, I had Sonoma, and for 20 months, I ran my business with the scraps of time that I had. We had no childcare. My husband works away for two weeks at a time and for two weeks he's at home. So for two weeks, I'm a, I'm a solo parent. It's just me. I hustled. During nap time, like I'd put her down and rush up to my office, which by the way, I'm doing that today, but it's okay. Um, I got up early and I would work until Sonoma woke up. When she went to bed, I would rush up to my office and keep working. It is really fair to say, even now looking back, that I didn't have a lot of time. My to-do list pretty much every week went incomplete and I just lusted for more time. I thought that when we get childcare, everything would change. I was like, look at world. I'm going to have all this free time. I'm going to go to yoga, have a nap, maybe do five podcast episodes a week. I'm going to take on new clients and speaking engagements and all of the things. <sighs> Spoiler alert, it didn't happen. Yes, some great things happened in my life and I will talk about that. I'm going to do a year interview episode and I'll talk about how I definitely needed to get childcare sooner. So it did change my life in a lot of ways. But let me tell you what it didn't do. I didn't suddenly feel like I had all this time. In fact, I didn't real I didn't get much more done than I was doing before. Some days I look back and I look back and I was like, what did I even do today? Oh my gosh. Like I literally peed away the time. It didn't suddenly allow me to have all this freedom. I didn't suddenly feel like I had time to go to yoga class midday or have a nap. None of those things happen. That is what made me realize that it is so much more than time management. And simply having more time isn't always the answer. Now, maybe you can't relate to my childcare story, but let me ask you this. Have you ever said, the next few weeks are busy and then things will settle down, only to then never have those things calm down, like ever? Yeah, 
I know you have. I know you're shaking your head. I know you're nodding your head here. You're with me. Me too. That's how I know that it's not about just more time. It's not something we wait for. And we are not victims of our circumstance or our time. You and I, we are in charge, my friend. And until we take charge, we're going to be on the hamster wheel. And I learned this from feeling like I had no time when Sonoma was at home with me all the time to even her being in daycare. I still felt like I was had no time and I was still on that hamster wheel. That's what really caused me to, to jump back and think and say, okay, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a different way and really evaluate my mindset. And so that's what I'm going to share with you guys today and all three of these time management episodes is what I've learned and what's helped me so that I hope it can help you too. Now, let's talk about the three perspective shifts to make. The first one, you probably heard this before, but it's worth repeating. Stop saying, I don't have time or I haven't, quote, found time. Like, get over that. William Penn says that time is what we want most, but what we use worst. Can I get an amen on that one? Do me a favor. Look at the amount of screen time you spent on your phone over the last week. How much time are you spending a day? My guess? I'm going to guess at least two or more hours. For me, full disclosure here, I got my (laughs) hand over my heart here. I'm horrified that sometimes it is like four, five, or six hours on my phone. I literally get feel this gut punch because sometimes I've gotten notifications that say, congratulations, you've reduced your screen time by 20% to only four hours and 20 minutes a day. Ooh, that makes me want to cry just saying this. and It's embarrassed sharing it out loud. But I know that I'm not the only one. I also know that some of the things that I'm on my phone, it, it matters. Uh, I'm connecting with my partner when he's away. I'm connecting with you guys. My business is on there. I'm listening to music or podcasts. I'm using Google Maps to get around the city. I am, I'm Googling what the best pizza is to pick up for the night. Like those are important things. But I'd be lying if I said that all of that four or five or six hours on my phone is how I wanted to spend my time. Can you relate to this too? Now this isn't about perfection. I'm not here to judge you. Uh, I slip backwards too. Again, these episodes here are just to help you get jump started here. So I want you to think about time instead of thinking that you don't have any or that you're not in control of it. I want you to Take charge and I want you to realize that it's the most valuable currency you have and how you spend it is the most important thing. Let me give you another example here. This like I don't have time or I can't find the time. If you had an emergency, you would find a way. If right now your basement flooded, you would find a way. You would would clear out your calendar and make the space for it. You would perhaps take time off work if you needed to, or you would say no to the fancy cupcakes for the for the bake sale, or you would at, call your friends over and be like, come on over and help me. We got to get this basement unflooded. Like you make it happen. And that is proof. You know, this is an exact proof that you are in charge of your time. And yeah, you can't always call in sick to work every, you know, every single day because you want to have a nap. But if you had to, you would find a way. So I want you to raise the level of necessity that you have here around your time and know whatever your goal is, whatever is super important to you, whether that is getting more rest, whether that is feeling more connected to your partner, whether that is finishing your screenplay, starting your side hustle, doing your triathlon, whatever that is, raise the necessity and act like it's an emergency because if it is an emergency, you will find a way and you will make it happen. Okay, second reframe here. I want you to think about your time as energy and imagine what's the best way to spend it. Now, I talked in the last episode a little bit about this, but I want to just bring it up again. How do you want to feel? Like, think about that. Remember, it's all about how you want to feel. None of the goals, none of the the, um, accolades or awards, they don't matter if you don't feel the way you want to be feeling. If you don't feel energized or like you're making an impact or valued, those are what really matter. Now, let's talk about energy here. You only have so much of it. Research shows that you're really only at your peak mentally for about five to six hours a day. And we could talk about the history of the 40-hour work week, but basically it's just a lot of bull crap. Um, most of us can't, like our, our productivity actually declines the longer we work. Like we get slower and slower and slower and it's diminishing returns. This might be a little bit different depending on who you are, but you cannot do eight hours or 12 hours or 16 hours of intense brain work every single day, all day. You just can't. So what I want you to do is think about when do you work best and when is your mind the freshest? And this might be different. Some of you guys might be morning people and that's your best time. Some of you might be afternoon. Some of you might be evening. Ask yourself this. If I only did five hours of you know work or real intense thinking, what would I spend it on? Where do I start and when do I do it to give it my best? 
This is something that I've been thinking about. When I sit down for my desk, at my desk to do my work, I think, okay, if I've only got five hours, what is the stuff that's most important? And that means that I stay off a lot of social media and, and getting into sucked into scrolling. And I dive right into creating, to scripting, to coming on here and actually talking to you guys through this podcast and doing lives like that and creating content for my community. Like that is what it's all about. That is where my genius is. So if I only got five or six hours a day, I got to spend it doing that because trust me, I could spend it all doing editing or other things that I'm not as good at. And then at the end of the day, be too tired for the things that really matter. So I want you to reframe your time management to energy management and consider how do you want to feel and what's the best way and t- to spend your time to feel that way. How can you spend, if you only got five or six hours of brilliant time, how can you spend that today that's most important and where do you want to give your best to? So a part of me really wants to swear on this next one, but I put a poll out and you guys were like, well, most of you said it was okay to swear, but I know there's a few of you that don't love it. So I'm going to just not swear here for now until I get over a little bit more of this people pleasing and maybe one day I'll get there. But in case you got kids in the room, you're still okay. Uh, I'm not going to swear for this one. But the, number three, I want you to get intentional AF. For those of you guys that don't know what that is, ask your teenage kids or Google it what AF is. And I know it doesn't sound as impactful, but just bear with me here. I want you to get intentional AF. Stephen Covey, I love this quote. He says, the key is not spending time, but in investing it. I love this because I want you to think about your time so that you invest it in what is most important and has value to you. Now, that's going to be different to you than it is to me, and that's okay because we're all going to invest in different things. And that's why this is another reason, oh, so many reasons, why just tips, strategies, tactics don't matter and don't make the difference for everybody because we all have different values. We're all going to want to invest in different places. Choose your goals. Choose how you want to feel, and then you can invest your time based on that. Now, this relates to an important shift that I want you to make. I think most of us are pretty good about the work, you know, about going to work and having a to-do list and maybe even setting timers and working through that time. But it's our personal time that I don't think we're as intentional about. And I want to reframe that because I believe that you need to be just as intentional with your personal time as you do with your work time. One of the most common reasons I have women joining one of my programs, my Golden Girls Mastermind or Golden Girls Community or working with me one-on-one is because they want better balance, you know, work life, personal family time, all the things. The reality is, and this is again why strategies and tactics aren't enough, if you actually looked at the time, and time studies, by the way, have proven this. Most people think that they sleep less, but most people actually sleep about eight hours a night. Most people think they work 60 or 70 hours a week, but most people actually work Less than eight is the truth. If you looked at your life, it's actually probably pretty well, quote, balanced as far as time. Eight hours of sleep, roughly eight hours of work, roughly eight hours of personal time. So why does it feel like this? Well, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. It's because you're not as intentional about your eight hours of personal time as you are about your work time. I got to say, recently, um, okay, generally in my life, I feel pretty well balanced because I am quite intentional. But recently, I struggled with this too. And anytime, this is why time is, you can come back to these episodes anytime you have a big transition in life. With Sonoma going into daycare again, I was like, oh yeah, everything's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. Well, it was actually a huge change and I had to shift everything. So here's where I struggled. Um, I had this feeling like uh, things were out of balance for me. And I was like, what the heck? Now I actually have personal time to spend with Sonoma and I still just feel like my life is just work and chores and then the weekend. So I dug deeper and what I realized is that I wasn't having any fun in the evenings after picking Sonoma up from daycare. And maybe some of you guys can relate to this. Whether you have kids or not, it was like, okay, I rushed to get home and then I'm rushing to cook and then we're eating, then I'm cleaning up and then maybe doing a bath or maybe not, more likely, maybe not. Uh, then we're reading and it's bedtime and then I finish cleaning up and then I'm exhausted and I crawl into bed only to repeat this for four more freaking days. It wasn't working for me. So there were two things that I had to change here, and this is where getting intentional AF really help out. So number one, get intentional about your fun time too. If you allow it to, the to-dos of life are going to take over all of your fun and personal time. There is always going to be something to clean, something to recycle, laundry to be done, a closet to sort through and declutter, a fridge to clean out. There's always going to be something. So caveat here. I know there's a few of you out there. If that brings you joy, if that brings you connection or love or intimacy or courage or whatever you want to feel, you do you, friend. You go do that. 
But for most of us, that's just not true. For most of us, we default to cleaning or recycling or organizing or doing more of the things because we struggle to stay still or because we think that's what we need to be doing. Here's what I'm going to challenge you to do. Get as intentional about your you time as you are about your work time. Okay? Get as intentional about all of your time. So stop spending even 10 or 20 minutes on your phone in the morning. Stop spending every night cooking if you don't love it. Ask yourself, what do I want to be doing? And fill your time with that. So that means put the book next to your nightstand. This is where we're, ta- we're going to talk about habits here a little bit. Put that book next to your nightstand and read that instead, whether it's first thing in the morning or last thing, instead of scrolling on your phone. Book that workout class in advance so you have to wash the dishes faster or let them pile up a little, but at least you got your yoga in, right? Here's something that I've done. At least one night a week, and I actually aim for two or three, I plan something fun with Sonoma so we aren't in our usual routine. I have a list of things on my phone in Evernote that I love doing with her and enjoy doing. So we do those. We've gone for picnics. I might go for a walk to the beach, maybe both. We have a dance party. I take her to the pool. I invite a friend over for dinner or we go out and try a new restaurant for dinner. The difference is that we are consciously including and incorporating fun, connecting activities. My core desired feelings, as Danielle Laporte would say, into our week instead of just hoping I'll find time for it or waiting to the weekend to have it happen. Now, this means that my house is a little messier than than maybe it could be. Uh, means that my laundry doesn't get folded every single day and sometimes it sits in the basket for a few days. But man, am I ever happier. And do I ever feel more balanced? And I don't believe that we're ever perfectly balanced, but I'm just more joyful. I'm a more fun mom and I feel like, wow, I'm not missing out on watching my kid grow up because I'm so busy having a freaking clean house. It doesn't even matter to me. I will never look back in 20 years and say, I didn't write that book, but my house is clean. Or I didn't start that podcast, but man, I organized the crap out of that closet. Like that's just not the way that it is. And so I really encourage you to, as you're thinking about getting intentional with your time, think about what is really going to be the thing that you're proud of in the next five years, 10 years, 20 years. Like what is going to make you happy today and make you proud for the long term? And I guarantee you, it's not a lot of the things that you might think it is. So get fired up about this (laughs) because I know how what it's like to struggle through all this and I really hope that this helps you. Okay. Okay. Here's the second part of getting intentional. And this one, I'm not perfect at, but I want to share it with you because it's something that I'm on a journey with and um, I know it's something I got to continue continue to work on. Presence. Getting present. It is one thing to, you know, put your phone away um, but still be thinking about what, what might be on there, what email might be coming in, what message you've got to send. It is one thing to go to a yoga class and it is another thing to be in the yoga class and not be making to-do lists. And thinking about all the things you got to do when you leave the class. And I say this not because I'm judging, but because that is me. Like I struggle to go to those classes and think that I might be able to put my phone away, but that doesn't mean that I'm always that good at being present. So this is something I'm working on. I would was doing fun things and still not even enjoying them. Some of the things that I've done to try and help this is leaving my phone at home when we go for a walk or go out. Leave my phone at home when we go to the pool. Practicing breathing more. Taking deep breaths repeatedly turning off my work brain, like letting myself know it's okay to shut down. It's okay to to slow it down um, and really allowing myself to get present. One of the tools my one of my coaches taught me was to, in the moment, if I would feel myself going away, not being present, to come back to the moment and notice five things I've never noticed before in the moment. And that's a really good way to ground back down too. I want to just share that with you because you can do all the right things and still not feel it, still not experience it. And that's another way to make you feel out of balance. And my gosh, whether you are spending two hours having quality time or 200 hours, if you are not present, it doesn't matter. You are still not going to feel better. You're still not going to feel connected or loved or intimacy or authenticity or connection or whatever that, however you want to feel, you're not going to feel it if you're not present to what you're in the moment and experiencing. Not all time is created equal. And this is why this intentional really matters. I wish that I could say you only have to work two hours a day and then the rest of your day you can just go have fun, but I don't know your situation. I mean, let me say this. I believe that's possible. It just may not be possible today. So here's what I want you to reframe. Even if you don't have the exact same amount of time to spend with each one of your friends or you you feel like, quote, you don't have enough time to spend with all of your kids or all of your partners or all the things you want to do, just remember this, that not all time is created equal. And spending two hours with your best friend in a great chat 
Let me know if I'm the only one. I don't think I am. A great chat can go by in what feels like two minutes, right? So fast. And if I asked you to hold a plank for two minutes, well, that would probably feel like two hours. Same thing like me. So it's not always about how much time. It's about the quality. So I want you to just shift out of that and that idea that it's not enough time and remember that really great quality time can really fly by and that's okay because it's adding so much value to your life. If you're intentional and if you're enjoying it, it really shifts your perception of time. It's about the quality and how you're spending it and the energy you're getting from it so much more than exactly how long you're spending doing it. So my friend, whether you've got five minutes at the end of the day to sit down on the couch and just enjoy the silence or whether you've got five hours on a weekend to meditate or five days to go on a huge meditation retreat, the point here is that get what you can out of those moments, every moment that you have, soak it up. Be present for it. Be intentional. And that's going to fundamentally shift how you view your time, how you experience it, and how you feel in your life, which changes everything. All right. Now let's talk about mindset blocks. I've got two questions for you. I'm going to dive into this. And here's where it gets a little personal and I'm going to share with you guys a lot of what I've struggled with. So I hope that I hope that this helps. First question, if I'm to ask you, why don't you have more time? What is stopping you from having enough time? Tell me. I guess you technically can't because it's a podcast, but <laughs> you send me a DM, hey, send me an email, send me a message. What comes up for you? Like, why don't you have more time? What is stopping you? I'm going to guess that there's probably some kind of a, something that comes up for you, whether it is, oh, my job is so intense. My boss demands this much. I'm starting a new business. Um, I have young children. My, I'm in a new relationship. I have to, I'm volunteering for this organization. And what you can then do is ask yourself why a few times. Like, okay, my, I have a demanding boss. Well, why? Okay, break that down. Well, because I want to move up in this, in this career. Okay. Or why? Well, I want to have, I'm kind of making this up as I go, by the way. So bear with me here. You know, I want to be able to make an impact in the work that I'm doing. Well, why? Well, because it's important to me that I can show my family, I can show other women what it's like to move up in the world. And I want to be able to make a difference here. Well, as you start to break that down, you're going to see that there may be some underlying mindset challenges here. Some of the things that may come up here, you know, especially I think around for women, I think a lot of us struggle with this, feeling like we actually have to do more work than the men at work in order to get ahead. I don't know if anyone else has ever thought that. Um, That's an example of if you ask yourself why a few times, that might come up. And that's an example of an underlying mindset belief that it doesn't matter like how much time I give you. If you always believe that you have to work harder than your colleagues, well, you're just going to continue to use the spare time to work harder. Am I right? Maybe you have a belief that you have to make homemade dinner every night, that you have to clean your house every week, that one day every weekend has to be dedicated to cleaning, that you have to wait for your kids and watch them while they're doing all their activities. Maybe it's a belief that you have to stay late at the office every day every day, or they want, they're not going to think you're dedicated enough. Or that the only way to be successful is to hustle all the time. There are so many of these underlying beliefs. And again, none of, for none of these, like it doesn't matter how much time I give you, if you always think you have to have a perfectly clean house, if you always think you have to make dinner every night, like I can't help you, right? You can't help you. That's the bigger thing. So you have to figure out like what belief you're going to actually hold on to and which one you're, which one is going to serve you and which one is not. Let me give you another example of this one. I have to be the one to do it. I'm the only one that can do it. This could be in business or this could be at home. I hear this one a lot at home, not going to (laughs) lie. I have to be the one to clean because my husband sucks at it. Or I have to cook because my husband doesn't even know where the stove is. Or I have to create the content. I have to do the customer reach out. I have to do the bookkeeping. No one else can do it. Ladies, let go. Let go. Okay? Release. If, If what you want is perfection then yeah, you might have to do it. But let me tell you the serious truth here is that even you are not going to be perfect. Even you are going to make mistakes. And if if what you really want is that control, then yeah, you go for it. And if that makes you feel the way you want to feel, okay, you go for it. But my, my prediction here, my sassy judgment here is that it's not actually serving you. If he misses a spot when he's vacuuming, who cares? Like really, who cares? He's vacuuming. He's helping you. Say thank you. Let go of the control. This is about you and your control and not about them. I want to say like, let other people help. Let other people in. Let other people do the work. Let other people try. 
I'm not saying, you know, let your two-year-old chop the vegetables with the biggest knife in the house, but if no one is going to get hurt, and if you are overwhelmed, if you are exhausted, and you could do with some more sleep, with a yoga class, with your feet up while someone else cooks dinner for you, or while you get the takeout while you wait for it to come in, or if you could do with some more time to work on your dreams, you have to let something go. And this might mean that you have to let go of that belief that you're the only one that can do it or that you do it best or that someone else cannot do it as good as you. This relates to business too. Like I said, you know, can other people outsource or can you outsource? Can other people on your team do it? And make sure if you haven't already, episode seven, your zone of desire. What are the things that you are absolutely amazing at and that you love doing and outsource all the things that are not in that zone? Okay, I'm going to tell you one of mine. Uh, this took, it's taken me a while to to dive deeper and I probably still have some layers here to heal and to work through. I have this, um, for a long time when I had Sonoma, it was really hard for me to leave the house. And for a while it was like, okay, well, you know, I'm breastfeeding so I, I can't leave her for a certain amount of time or um, I can't. I can't go to a workout class because she needs me or I should be working. And it really, I had to ask myself why, why, why? And why I couldn't go and do these things, why I couldn't make time for myself is because I had this underlying belief that it was selfish to take to make time for myself. Now, I come from a long line of really hardworking and amazing women, um, women that did everything and in a lot of cases still do everything for everyone else. And I want to say this, really important to say this, I am not here to judge them or blame them. This is just my experience and how I absorbed my childhood and what I saw. And it's the same is going to be true for you, by the way. There's going to always be somewhere where your beliefs, where your mindsets come from. And I encourage you, don't blame other people about it. Um, a good shift to make here is to have compassion for them, for them and for you too, so that you can move forward. So... Here I am all these years later (laughs) as a mom feeling guilty about everything, feeling guilty for taking time for me, for showering, for brushing my teeth, for going to a yoga class. And my limiting belief was I'm not as good of a mom if I make time for myself. I'm a selfish mom. I'm that kind of mom if I make time for me. And you can see how this directly made it so that I never had time for me. Uh, I never did it. And so it didn't matter how much time I had, I would always just cram it with more things around the house or more time with my kid or things that I felt would make me or I thought define me as a good mom and not, quote, a selfish mom. Now, I'm still uncovering layers of this and I'm having to rewire my mindset. So saying that taking time for myself is one of the best gifts that I can give to those around me. This is one of the thoughts that I have to program into myself. I say to myself, I'm teaching my daughter that she's important and she gets to decide how to spend your time. And it's okay for you to decide too. And I encourage you to spend it on you too. So this is something that I have gotten better at over the last, I would say, six to nine months. And now that like once I uncovered it and have started to reframe that, it, it's so much easier now. Um, there's definitely going to still be layers there. As things change, it'll it'll creep back up. But I wanted to share that with you. And so it didn't matter, again, how much time I had. Like if my belief is that taking time for me means I'm selfish or that I'm not as good of a mom, I'm never going to do it. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I believe everyone needs a coach. There's a reason why the world's top athletes, leaders, and entrepreneurs all work with coaches. It's because we do better when we're being supported, challenged, and encouraged to be our best selves. And let's be honest, who doesn't do better with a little accountability? Each year, I take on a limited number of one-on-one clients, and I love getting to know them and support them on a really intimate level. Now, I also walk the talk, or is it? Walk the walk. I don't know how that expression goes. Anyways, my point is that I don't just coach. I get coached. Through the last few years, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on my own development with coaches and masterminds. And believe me, I have no plans on stopping that anytime soon. But here's the thing. Not everyone is ready or needs a ten or twenty or $50,000 coach. That is why I created Golden Girls Community, a community-driven, inspiring place to get amazing coaching and to work with me with an accessible price point and easy commitment. To create the best world-class experience, Golden Girls Community registration only opens a few times a year. If you really want to learn more and be the first to find out the next time the doors open, head to lisamichaud.com forward slash community. I know incredible things can happen when you have a clear direction and a simple call to action and challenge each and every month. Month after month, our community members report being more confident, having more clarity, and feeling empowered. 
Together, we are always celebrating new and exciting milestones, anything from starting new businesses, growing and scaling existing businesses, and having the courage to apply for and land an exciting new job. But it is so much more than that. Our members are finding their artistic voices, finally organizing their houses, amen to that, and report better work-life balance than ever before. So hop on the waitlist today because trust me, you do not want to miss out. I hope you'll consider joining because I would love to see you in the Golden Girls community. Okay, so that's question one. <laughs> that is uncovering your time mindset. So we're going to go even a layer deeper here. And this is where the question gets even more real and there's a lot of pieces here. I want to share this question for you and I want you to take a few moments and reflect on it. Maybe even take a half an hour, meditate, journal, talk it out with a friend, talk it out with your partner, work with a coach on this. This is a big question here. Why don't you have the success you want? What is standing in your way? Listen in on that. Talk it out. Breathe it in. Reflect. Check in to see what that is. And again, apply that whys, you know, five whys. Why, why, why? Ask yourself. Dig deeper and see. Wait till you hit that truth that like punches you in the gut. Then you're like, yeah, you can hear almost an audible thud that's like that is the truth. There are probably some limiting beliefs telling you why you don't have the success you want. Well, people like me don't get things like that. Or if I try, I'm just going to fail. Or if I'm successful, my family won't include me anymore. I don't know anyone that doesn't have some kind of a limiting belief here. Some sort of a belief that may, may have served you at some point or maybe isn't, but at this point is no longer serving you. This is what, by the way, we're always coming up against this and it Every level, everything, every change, every evolution, every new goal, every new dream, you're going to have to check in and go back to your mindset and figure out, first of all, what you're telling yourself and then if what you're believing is serving you or not. If you haven't already, make sure you go back to episode five, how to believe in yourself. It is basically a mini masterclass in mindset and I highly recommend you listen to it. I'm not going to repeat everything uh, because in that episode, I really talk to you about how to identify any more limiting beliefs, and then how to rewire and integrate them because that's super important. So definitely, as I'm talking through this and you're coming up with your limiting beliefs and you're uncovering them, listen to that episode and go implement what's in there because it's going to help you so, so much. What I wanted to talk about here is to really just share some personal stories and examples of how these limiting beliefs, how this mindset stuff, how when we don't believe in ourselves, how it impacts our time and our relationship with it. So personal disclaimer, I struggle with a lot of these and that's how I know that it's probably something you struggle with too. I'm sharing these so that you can hear it, so that you can understand where mindset ties in and hopefully I've already convinced you, but if not, this list surely will. And also in case it just jigs something in your mind, in case it sparks something that makes you say, ah, there, yep, there's some truth there. I'm going to explore that deeper and go a little further. So that's why I'm sharing these with you. Okay, so here is how some underlying limiting beliefs can be impacting your relationship with time and leaving you stressed and feeling like you don't have enough time to do anything. So let's talk first about fear. So I'm going to talk about fear of failure and fear of success. Well, if you're afraid to fail, then it might make you procrastinate. Like you don't want to even do the thing because you just don't know if you're going to be able to achieve it. You're so afraid of trying and failing that you don't do it. And so as a tactic of procrastination, you start to try and do many, many, many things, trying to do all the things um, so that you don't have to do the things that are actually going to make the difference, but the ones that are risky enough that may or may not result in success and may may leave you failing. I've also seen people self-sabotage here and you take your time because it's better to run out of time and then never try or miss a deadline than it is to try and fail. Now, fear of success. This is, I see this come up so often with high achieving women. And a lot of them, I think it's unconscious in a lot of situations too. Some of them, some of us know about this. Some of us have experienced it, but some of us, I think it actually stays below the surface. So like, what are other people going to think if you make more money or have more followers, get the promotion or have the bigger office? If you're afraid of these things, these can 
sometimes self-sabotage you and you and don't end up trying to go for the promotion because you're afraid of it. And so you just use that excuse of, well, there's not enough time or, I'm, I mean, I'm stressed already. Like, how could I possibly have more? And you tell yourself, you make yourself wrong for wanting more and scare yourself out of that next level. Maybe you, it, you're not putting yourself out there. You're not being bold and you're, again, self-sabotaging, spending your time doing things that you shouldn't be doing or using that excuse of time because you're afraid that if you're successful – Someone in your family or your community or your workplace or your friends are going to judge you for it. Now, I also see scarcity mindset creeping up and scarcity is the belief that there's not enough, that there is a limit to, this can be money, to time, haha, to cl- clients out there, to the number of promotions, to success, like and whatever success is to you, that there is a limit to it and that if you end up taking from someone else, that you're taking, if you, sorry, if you're successful, you take it from someone else. Earlier this year, I had a client come to me who was like, I don't have enough time. I'm building this business and it's super busy, but oh my gosh, I just, I I don't know how I'm possibly going to scale because I'm already so busy. And we did a bit of digging and we realized that it was actually due to a scarcity mindset. She had this underlying belief that if she didn't take on a client, that she wasn't going to have any more or that if she didn't take these people, that the the supply of customers was going to dry up, her revenue was going to go away. And so what ended up happening is that she was taking on every client at any price. And of course, then she had an overbook calendar, not enough time to do anything, not enough time to outsource, and not working on things she actually wanted to do, and not able to ever see a way out of there because she was like, well, I'm already so busy, I can't possibly be doing any more. So here's an, that's an example where if you don't believe that there's enough clients out there or enough work out there or enough money or enough success or enough time – This is an example of where that can really break down and it actually shows up and it manifests itself in the way that you treat your time, in the clients you take or don't take or the jobs you take or don't take or the the salaries you're negotiating or not negotiating or the things that you allow yourself to invest in or not. So I think that that's such a great example and this is why I just, oh, I'm so excited about this topic because it's super easy on the surface again. Like she came into one of my programs and was like, I just need more time. And when we dug deeper, it was like, okay, you don't actually need more time. You just need to change this mindset. Start charging what you're worth and only take on the clients that are really going to fire you up because you don't have time to take on anyone at any price. It's not about time management. It's about changing your scarcity mindset. And if this is ringing true to any of you guys, um, definitely let me know. Send me a DM. I'd love to chat with you guys more about this too. And if I can, I can help you in any way, totally let me know. But um, I just see that this is – I hope that this is – eye-opening for you guys because it's so tempting to just get stuck in the tactics and the hacks and the techniques but like you can't you can't hack your way out of that scarcity you can't like just because you're doing now okay well I, I'm taking on 50 clients like I'm going to be more productive I'll take on 80 like that's not going to change the underlying reason here and that was never going to transform her business so if we didn't look at her at the scarcity if we don't get deeper and the same thing for you if you don't get deeper you're never going to change what's actually going on here if we don't unpack that suitcase if we don't unpack that baggage and repack it with things that are actually going to serve you you're never going to be able to get to that next destination with the right tools in your baggage Oh, I think I just made that analogy work. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. Believing in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, no amount of time is going to change that. If you don't believe that you can do it, you won't sign up for the race. You won't get off the couch. You're going to be too busy, quote, doing other things. If you don't know that you can write a successful book or screenplay, you're not going to prioritize spending your Saturday mornings doing that. You're going to tell yourself that you have to do the groceries, have to do the laundry, have to go for the boozy brunch, whatever that is instead. I know we're getting deep on this stuff, but not believing in yourself can manifest in a lot of ways in the way that you're spending your time especially and maybe even avoiding doing hard things and working on what's actually important to you because you're afraid or you're not sure if you can actually do it. Okay, let's talk about people pleasing here. This is very real for me and people pleasing can be a reason why you have no time. This is a true story. Last year, I went through a two-week period where I had these things I wanted to do in my business, a couple to-do lists, items, and I accomplished none of them, like zero. I kept saying to my husband, I have no time to work on my business. I have no time to work on my business. And you know, Truth be told, again, full-time full time parent, um, we just bought a new property. So on the surface, it looked like I had no time. But then I reflected. And what I realized is that in that same two-week period that I had just said I, I did nothing for my business and I was saying I didn't have any time to work on my business, I helped six other people with their businesses. 
like over 30 hours of helping other people in just two weeks as a solo parent with no childcare. I even got involved in a political campaign and I'm proud of that and I am all for, you know, community and collaborating and giving back and helping others. But I certainly couldn't say that I have no time. And this was, uncovering this, this was the first thread in like a giant ball of yarn that I've discovered is a deep need in me. The deep, I have this deep need to be liked and to make others happy and please people. So I'm still working on this. It's been about a year. I'm probably going to be struggling with this my whole life. But I know firsthand how people pleasing can limit your time because, and this is what I did, you start to offer your help even when you don't have time. You put others first and put your own goals and your own to-dos on the back burner. You don't ask for help because you don't want people to not like you or you don't want to inconvenience others. You're going to play it safe in a lot of areas, not just time, time is a big one, but you're going to play it safe because you want others to be happy and you will go out of your way not to make others uncomfortable. This also could lead to you not valuing your time, undercharging or putting you know appointments in the calendar or not adhering to your own boundaries, doing work late at night when you're actually not supposed to be and you've set the boundary, you're just not holding to it. And then you have to work a heck of a lot harder to get, make money in your business or to get the promotion or to save up to actually buy the house that you want to or go on the vacation you want to or do whatever it is that is in your dreams. So people pleasing is real. Like people pleasing, this can have a huge impact in a lot of ways in all parts of your life and especially in time. And that's a little bit about how that worked for me. Okay, here's another personal example. <laughs> Clearly, you guys can tell I do not have this all figured out. And I truly hope that this helped for you to hear this um, from me to you. <sighs> so one of the things that I recently realized is my addiction to busy. Busy is my default. I will always fill the time. You know, me telling you the story uh, at the beginning of this episode about Sonoma going into daycare. Like as soon as I had more time, I just filled it. My default is busy. My be- my default is more, do more, do more, do more. And so I just added more things to the to-do list and I didn't end up having more time as I thought. Let me give you another example. Okay, so I was doing a local speaking engagement one morning and I walked out of my building and I put in my GPS. I was like, okay, um, how do I get to this place? Well, I could take the bus and it would take me about 11 minutes And if I walked, it was going to be about 20 minutes. So I went to the bus stop and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And I stood there and I got so impatient, okay? I got so impatient and I couldn't handle being still that I decided to walk instead, okay? And I was like, maybe I can actually beat the bus. Side note, you can't beat the bus. I'm not that fast, not at at six in the morning. So I walked slash ran. I showed up sweaty and panting and almost late. The bus passed me on the way. It's like none of this makes sense. And I walked and I realized as I was reflecting as I was on the way there, I was like, this is dumb. I can't believe I'm doing this. What am I doing? (laughs) It was a really good lesson because I realized I walked because I couldn't handle being still. Even though it would have saved me time, even though it would have been easier, I would have been less sweaty, I would have been on on, on time at the time where I knew who I wanted to be, I still did the harder thing and I because I couldn't stand being still. This is, I don't think this is the healthiest way to be. This is something that I'm consciously trying to unwire and figure out why do I attach so much of my worth to to doing and to always being busy. So I'm definitely trying to explore this and figure this out. There's some good things to this. You know, there I get I get to do a lot of fun and amazing things because I'm really good at getting things done. But there's a dark side. And so this is my challenge to you. If any of this rings true, start to observe yourself All right, as you're writing your to-do list. Do you just keep adding things on that you could do or are nice to do? Are you being busy just to be busy? You know, are you saying yes to hanging out with mediocre people or doing mediocre fun things, quote, fun things, because it's better than just being alone or being bored? You know, I don't have all the answers for myself and I don't have all the answers for you, but I wanted to bring this to your attention. If you are also someone who wears busy like busy like a badge of honor, if you are a busy by default person, You will never be able to time management hack anything because you just keep adding to the pile. Like, think about that. My hack was to take the bus and save myself about half the time and I couldn't do it because it was, just couldn't stand being still. So if you can relate to this and maybe not this exact situation, look at your life and ask where else is this happening? Where could you dial it back and accept that good enough or done is better than perfect, you know? Where can you outsource? And yes, you're going to feel less busy, but maybe soak into that and see what it feels like. Where can you simplify or do less? 
can you do a pre-made meal, you know, pick up a Costco salad or something instead of having to make it all yourself? Like, what can you do to dial back the busy? This is something that I'm working on for myself. Um, I'm challenging myself this month to release and let go. Remember, and this is something that I'm reminding myself of too, that you are you beyond being productive and busy. Spend time being whatever that means to you. Okay. By now, you guys are probably realizing that I got some issues, you know, people-pleasing, overachieving, busy, perfectionism. I also have the lucky honors of being a perfectionist. <laughs> and maybe you can relate to this. Everything takes you so freaking long because it's got to be perfect. And I got to tell you, creating this series on time management has pulled out all kind of perfectionism in me. I've had to set timers and limit myself and say, okay, 80%, I'm 80% as much as I, good as this episode is going to get and just let it be done be, rather than be perfect. So for all my fellow perfectionists out there, I see you and those are two tactics that have helped me is setting timers and allowing myself to get to 80% and then releasing. So um, two other things that may help you if, if you're a perfectionist, get a second opinion if you need it, someone else to look at it and say, hey, you know, this, this is good enough, you're good. Like they don't have to worry about the extra font or all the extra little editing on this or whatever it is. Uh, sometimes a second opinion just reminds you that, hey, no, you're doing a great job, good, good enough, done. Um, another thing that I'm doing uh, that I would recommend to you guys too that I'm doing too is give yourself permission to edit it later. But just like put it out into the world. And in fact, Vernon Richard says this. He, he asks the room often like, how many of you guys are perfectionists? And like everyone puts up their hand pretty much. And he said, well, probably you're not actually – uh, perfectionist, you're actually just afraid. Because to be perfect, you actually have to put something out into the world and then perfect upon it. That is the true meaning of perfectionism. And if you're a perfectionist, you would know that definition. Haha, <laughs> so funny, right? So <laughs> put it out there and edit it later. So here is my disclaimer here. I am going to probably be revisiting this topic again because of all the things that I forgot to put in. And of course, it's an evolution. The more that I learn, the more I'm going to want to share with you. And there's going to be little tips and tricks that I'm like, oh man, I can't believe I didn't add that in there or another little thought. So I'll probably come back to this and make another episode episode and that's how I'm releasing and just putting it out there into the world and getting over my perfectionism because man I could probably spend the next not even kidding like a couple months making these episodes perfect but it's better to just put them out in the world because it's not about having more time it's about doing what is going to make the biggest impact for you guys okay the last one Whew. this is a deep one worthiness and for me I this one definitely ties a little bit to the busyness for me so I struggle. I think that hustle is necessary. And the more that I work, the worthier I am. This can also tie to people pleasing. And so this is probably why this is one that I struggle with. You know, will others like me if I'm not as successful, if I don't help them as much? Um, what if others don't like me? Am I still successful? Or what if I get successful and other people don't like me? There's a lot wrapped up in here. And I work really hard so people can can see it, see the work that I'm doing. Um Self-worth can come into things like, am I, am I worth charging what I'm charging? Is anyone going to pay that? Who do I think I am? This also ties to a need to always be doing, that we believe that we're only worthy if we're productive. And here is what I've learned. And I have this on a sticky note on my desk because I struggle with this too. And the sticky note says this, you can't work yourself to worthiness. You cannot work yourself to worthiness. Me believing that I'm worthy and... um that I'm deserving and that I'm a whole, wonderful, perfect human just the way I am, that is never going to come from me working harder or from you working harder. That's not going to come from us doing more, from hustling, from cramming our time in with more, more, more. Like this is, again, where productivity hacks and tips and strategies can actually play into things that are not serving us, that, that belief that we always need to be doing more to be worthy of more. So – Here's my challenge to you. If any of this is ringing true, build in time for you, like time for nothing. Start with 10 minutes a day. Heck, you know, start with two minutes if that's all you can do. If you're like me at the bus stop that can't wait eight minutes, start with start with that. See how that feels and see where you have resistance. Like lean into that. And I will tell you, I certainly do. I really struggle with this. This is a mindset that, you know, no matter how much time you're given, if you don't think you're worthy of the do downtime, you won't ever take it. Okay, so if any of those rung true to you, awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. You've uncovered a limiting belief and that is so powerful. So now you know the crap that's in your suitcase that is not serving you and that is so powerful because now you can actually 
move forward and you can repack that with beliefs that are going to serve you, with beliefs that empower you, with beliefs that allow you to have more time and less stress in your life, which is what we're all after. So if you're still like not really sure, well, go back and listen to those questions. Why don't you have enough time? Why don't you have the success you want? And then do the work to rewrite that belief. Do the work to un, to repack what's in the suitcase, that what you need to get to where you want to go. Remember, sometimes awareness is enough and sometimes it's not. And episode five, break it all down for you, a little mini masterclass, highly recommend you listening to it. And there's a link in the show notes too. Okay, so let's recap here. The three perspective shifts to make. Stop saying, I don't have time, and shift that to, I'm in charge of my time. You have time, it's just not a priority. And remember, you can always create the time. If there was an emergency, you would make it happen. Number two, shift from thinking about just time management to energy management. How do you want to feel? And if you only had five or six best focusing hours, what's the best way to spend them? And when will you do that? Number three, get intentional AF. Get as intentional about your downtime as your work time. Remember, you are investing your time into something or someone, the work that you're doing, a relationship, your health. Spend your investment wisely and be intentional with all of it. How you feel about your time and then how you're using it is absolutely connected to your mindset. Like no amount of strategies or hacks is going to fix all of your time management problems. I guarantee you that. But if you can get the mindset right, you will automatically shift without fussing over a ton of strategies or hacks or tools. You're going to see massive results and changes in every aspect of your life, your relationships, your health, your sense of balance, what success means to you, all of those things when you uncover your mindsets and you shift those from limiting to empowering beliefs. So here are the two questions to help you uncover blocks you may have that are affecting your time. Number one, why don't you have more time? And what's stopping you from having more time? Remember, this is a lot of those things like, I have to do it all, or I'm a bad mom if I take more time for me, or my husband or my coworkers, they can't do it as well as I can. F those, okay? You're going to have to rewrite those if you want to have more time and want to have less stress. And I know you do. We all do. Number two, why don't you have the success that you want? It could be fears, you know, fear of failure, scarcity, uh, fear of success. It could be a lack of belief in yourself. It could be that desire to please others, wanting to be the nice girl, putting everyone else above you all the time. It could be an addiction to being busy or worth, uh, applying and directing your worth and tying that to your productivity and having that be the only way that you see yourself as worthy. Okay, I know that this is really big work. I know that it would be so much nicer if I could just give you the three steps Or here are my top seven tips to have more time and sit on your couch more. But if I told you that, I would be doing you a massive disservice. Honestly, it is way better for my SEO, for my social media following, for everything that I do in my business if I just make it sound easy. Because everybody's looking for easy. Everyone's looking for simple or dumb it down advice. But can we all just agree here that that doesn't work? I mean, if it did, like you could find a million articles of that online. And if they worked, we wouldn't be having the time crisis that so many of us are now feeling. You guys, I am in this for the long haul. I am growing this community, my impact, this business, you guys, for not for months and not for a year, but for years and decades of impact. That is why I'm so passionate about giving you the real tools. That's why I'm so passionate about talking about these hard things and reframing this in a way that I truly believe is going to serve you. Because I don't want to just give you something that's not going to work. I want you to think about your success and your goals and your time in terms of the long term. So please, and thank you, by the way, for listening to this. Thank you for not being short-sighted and thank you for not looking for quick fixes. Thank you for doing the work, for asking the questions in episode seven, for uncovering your limiting beliefs from this episode, and from shifting your perspective, from getting real about this and taking the time to reflect on you. And I know that you're busy, but I know that you're going to take the time. If you dedicated an hour or two in the next week, or heck, you know, 20 minutes a day for the next week to see what's limiting you, and then you took action oh my gosh, I know that you would fundamentally transform something in your life because when your mindset changes, everything else changes. When your mindset changes, your habit can change and that is what 
allows you to create a life that you've never had, to have things that you've never had, to do things you've never done before, and perhaps maybe just sit on your couch for 10 minutes at the end of the day and really soak up everything that is awesome in your life. I know this episode, it's it's not going to go viral, okay? It's probably not going to get the most listens. It may not get the most likes, and that is okay because I'm sharing it for you, Golden Girl. I'm sharing it because I know that this is what's going to make the biggest difference for you and the biggest impact in your life. If you actually listen to this and do the work and uncover these these pieces here, this is what's going to be a game changer for you. And that's what we're here for. Time is your currency. Thank you for spending it with me. Thank you for spending it well. Thank you for investing it with me. Keep living your life and, and keep pushing so that you continue to live your life in a way that leaves you feeling alive and that's going to leave you feeling proud that you were and you became the person you were meant to be. Create that life you're meant to be living by going for your big dreams and goals and start today. Start by creating the time for yourself and for what's important to you. Stop using the excuse that you're too busy. I think we've blown that one out of the water. Stop saying you don't have enough time or that you will do something, quote, when you have more time. Yeah, we're, we're just done with that, right? Goodbye. Start living your life and live it with the intention of what you want it to be and live it in a way that's authentic to who you are. Not not to your fears, not of what other people think or to your skewed definition of self-worth or to your dedication to being the nicest girl in the room. Stop that. But start living authentically to your best life, to being the most incredible version of you that is already inside of you. You already have everything you need right within you so that you have all the time in the world. Golden girl, go make the most of it. Thank you so much for listening. I know this is so much and I appreciate you being here. Make sure you stay tuned. The next episode, episode nine, I'm going to break down some strategies and tips. I know I just spent two episodes talking crap about them, but I'm going to share things that I do believe are going to work, but only if you have answered the four questions from episode seven and if you have uncovered your mindset, so you have shifted your perspective on time, then I know that the strategies and tools that I'm going to share with you in episode nine are going to be absolute game changers because they've been so helpful for me. Thank you again for listening and I will talk to you in the next episode of Golden Girls Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If something spoke to you, send me a message by sharing this episode and tagging me on social media. If you know someone who would love to hear this episode, please share it with them too. Because I love surprises, make sure you subscribe to the Golden Girls podcast today. It's the only way to find out about bonus surprise episodes and make sure you don't miss a single beat on your golden journey. Thanks again for listening and I will talk to you in the next episode of the Golden Girls podcast.